The world watched in shock as explosions rocked Beirut, sending plumes of smoke into the sky and causing widespread panic among the residents. Israel confirmed it had launched airstrikes on Hezbollah's headquarters in the Lebanese capital, marking a significant escalation in the ongoing conflict. The strike specifically targeted Dahiya, a Hezbollah stronghold in Beirut's southern suburbs, known for its dense population and strategic importance. This densely populated area was hit with what appeared to be 2,000-pound bombs, leaving behind scenes of utter devastation and chaos. Lebanese authorities reported casualties immediately, a number that tragically continued to climb as rescue operations unfolded amidst the rubble. Buildings were reduced to rubble, a testament to the sheer force of the attack, with entire blocks flattened and infrastructure severely damaged. The scale of the destruction surpassed anything seen in previous Israeli strikes on Beirut, sending shockwaves through the city and beyond, leaving residents in a state of disbelief and fear. Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati issued a desperate plea to the international community urging immediate intervention to prevent further bloodshed. He called for intervention, denouncing what he called Israel's tyranny and war of extermination against Lebanon and highlighting the urgent need for peace and stability. The strikes ignited a firestorm of international concern, with many fearing a dangerous escalation of violence in the region, and calls for diplomatic solutions grew louder. The situation in Beirut remained chaotic and volatile in the immediate aftermath of the strikes, with emergency services working tirelessly to assist the injured and restore some semblance of order. The international community grappled with the implications of this bold attack and its potential to ignite a wider conflict in the region as diplomatic efforts intensified to de-escalate the situation and prevent further violence. The aftermath of the strikes in Dahia was nothing short of catastrophic. The once bustling neighborhood now lay in ruins, a shadow of its former self. Rescue workers struggled to reach the wounded as they navigated streets littered with debris and reduced to rubble. Their efforts were hampered by the sheer scale of the destruction, with every corner revealing new horrors. The initial death toll was just the beginning, a grim prelude to the true human cost of the attack. Morgues quickly filled, and the task of identifying the deceased became a daunting challenge. Images emerging from Dahia painted a horrifying picture of the destruction. Entire blocks were flattened, and the skyline was marred by the skeletal remains of buildings. Buildings were reduced to piles of concrete and twisted metal. The infrastructure that once supported daily life was now a chaotic mess of debris. The streets were impassable, choked with debris and shrouded in smoke. Navigating through the city became a perilous endeavor with every step fraught with danger. The air was thick with the smell of dust, fire and the lingering scent of explosives. The once clear skies were now a haze of smoke and ash. Hospitals in Beirut were quickly overwhelmed with casualties. The influx of injured people stretched the medical facilities to their limits. Doctors and nurses worked tirelessly, struggling to cope with the influx of wounded. Their dedication was evident, but the sheer number of patients made their task nearly impossible. The injured ranged from those with minor cuts and bruises to those with life-threatening injuries. The triage process was grueling with medical staff making split-second decisions to save lives. The situation highlighted the fragility of Lebanon's healthcare system and the dire need for immediate humanitarian assistance. Makeshift tents were set up to handle the overflow of patients. The strikes left an indelible mark on Dahia, a stark reminder of the devastating human cost of conflict. The neighborhood's transformation from a vibrant community to a war-torn landscape was heart-wrenching. As the dust settled, the international community demanded answers and accountability. Diplomatic efforts intensified with global leaders calling for an end to the violence. The world waited with bated breath to see how the situation would unfold and what the long-term consequences of this attack would be. The future of the region hung in the balance, with many fearing further escalation. The question on everyone's lips was whether Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah had survived the attack. Israeli officials confirmed that he was the primary target, acknowledging the gravity of the decision to target such a high-profile figure. The world waited anxiously for news, with speculation swirling about Nasrallah's fate. 
Israeli intelligence agencies worked feverishly to confirm whether their mission had been successful. A senior Israeli official, speaking on condition of anonymity, admitted that it was too early to say definitively whether Nasrallah was dead or alive. The confirmation process, he explained, could take time. Lebanese officials remained tight-lipped, refusing to confirm or deny Nasrallah's status. This silence only amplified the uncertainty and fueled the already rampant speculation. The world watched and waited, holding its breath as the tension continued to build. The uncertainty surrounding Nasrallah's fate added another layer of complexity to an already volatile situation. The possibility of his death and the potential for retaliation from Hezbollah loomed large over the region. The stakes had never been higher and the world braced itself for the possibility of further violence. The Israeli strikes in Beirut triggered immediate international condemnation, with leaders from around the world voicing their disapproval and concern. World leaders, diplomats and international organizations expressed deep concern over the attack and its potential to ignite a wider conflict in the region. The fear of escalation was palpable, as many worried about the broader implications for regional stability. Calls for restraint and de-escalation echoed from all corners of the globe. Leaders emphasized the importance of avoiding further violence and urged all parties involved to step back from the brink. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres strongly condemned the strikes, calling for an immediate ceasefire. His message was clear, the violence must stop to prevent further suffering. He warned that the violence could have catastrophic consequences, drawing in regional and global powers and leading to unimaginable suffering. The potential for a larger conflict loomed large, with dire warnings about the humanitarian impact. Guterres urged all parties to exercise restraint and engage in dialogue to find a peaceful resolution. He stressed the importance of diplomacy and the need for a concerted effort to address the underlying issues. The United States, a key ally of Israel, expressed concern over the strikes and urged de-escalation. President Joe Biden highlighted the need for both sides to avoid actions that could further inflame tensions. The European Union echoed these sentiments, emphasizing the need to protect civilian lives and find a diplomatic solution. EU leaders called for an immediate halt to hostilities and a return to negotiations. The strikes put a spotlight on the complexities of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the urgent need for a lasting peace agreement. The long-standing issues between the two sides were once again brought to the forefront of international attention. The international community found itself at a crossroads. The choices made in the coming days and weeks would be crucial in determining the future of the region. The strikes in Beirut served as a stark reminder of the fragility of peace in the region and the devastating human cost of conflict. The images of destruction and the stories of those affected underscored the urgent need for a resolution. The world watched anxiously, hoping for a swift and peaceful resolution to the crisis. The hope was that through concerted international efforts, a path to peace could be found and the cycle of violence could be broken. As the conflict escalates, diplomatic tensions between nations intensify. Leaders from around the world voice their concerns, yet meaningful resolutions remain elusive. The stakes are high, and the path to peace seems increasingly fraught with obstacles. The cycle of violence shows no signs of abating. Each act of aggression is met with retaliation, perpetuating a seemingly endless loop of suffering and destruction. Civilians bear the brunt, caught in the crossfire with little hope of respite. The human toll of the conflict is staggering. Families are uprooted, forced to flee their homes in search of safety. Refugee camps swell with those seeking solace, but the conditions are dire and the future uncertain. Despair hangs heavy in the air as the displaced struggle to find a semblance of normalcy amidst the chaos. As we delve into the intricacies of regional dynamics, it's essential to understand the aspirations that drive nations. Each country envisions itself as a pivotal player, shaping the future of the region. This vision of regional power is not just about dominance, but also about influence and stability. 
The question that looms large is whether these ambitions are fueling the flames of conflict. Are the actions of these nations exacerbating tensions, or are they paving the way for a more balanced power structure? It's a delicate balance, one that requires careful navigation and a deep understanding of regional histories and grievances. As we stand at this crossroads, the path ahead is uncertain. Will the region move towards peace, or are we on the brink of further escalation? The decisions made in the coming months and years will be crucial. They will determine whether we witness a period of reconciliation or a descent into deeper conflict. The region remains on edge, with every move being closely watched. The stakes are incredibly high and the potential for both progress and peril is immense. As observers, we must remain vigilant, understanding that the future of this region will have profound implications for the entire world.